Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We're excited to spend the next 30 minutes with you during this third week of October. Quite a month so far. <laughs> okay guys, how many of you done your national <laughs> holiday duties for October? Have you been bowling? No. I wish. It's October. Have you been roller skating? <laughs> no. Why? They don't Why have size Have skating? any of you eaten popcorn? Uh -huh. Aha. Done that. Thanks, Caramel corn thanks to the whiz quiz. That's true. October is Learn to Bowl Month. It's also National Cookbook Month, National Stamp Collection Month, National Skating Month, oh, wow. and Look National Corn Popping Month. Well, what about hey, stamp collecting? Look at Look this. At yeah, yeah. I didn't ask if you've collected any stamps lately. Yeah, well, not lately, actually, from when I was much younger. But uh, huh. yeah, some. What do you have? Well, a first day issue of Roberto Clemente stamp, and then an issue commemorating the 15th anniversary of the Neil Armstrong. Air and Space Museum oh. in Wapakoneta. Wow. So. That's great. So, Mark wins. Yeah. <laughs> Mark wins. That's right. <laughs> well, there's also a lot of national food holidays, and we'll tell you about those. A few of those These coming up later in the show. Oh, we got to wait. <laughs> got to wait. Got to wait. Get today's show. However, I'll show you. I've got these nice pretty peppers. Well, I guess I won't I show you now. We'll anymore. show you later. How, here's what we have brewing for you. There's a guy named it's pretty popular on our station. I didn't write this, but it's <laughs> not me. He's back. We'll tell you about that, plus some other great new programming that we believe you will enjoy. That's right. We're also going to take you to the Mount Tabor Women's Retreat, which took place earlier this month. And we have a special interview with Dar and Deb Nevergall. It's about their loss of their teenage daughter. Deb recently wrote a book designed to help others walk through those different steps of grief. So we'll have that for you today. But Mark, first our scripture. Isaiah 41, 10 through 13, which is fitting for those who are dealing with grief or any situation of difficulty. I took, I look from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners. I called you, I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Some comforting words for, <laughs> for those that uh, we all have to go through some valleys and times of trouble and the word is there for us at all times with, with comforting thoughts that God is with us. Absolutely, that's right. Question there. Fear, shame, discouragement, sadness, but with an overall message that Christ came to free us from all that and much more. That was just one of the many messages presented in the first Get Real Women's Retreat sponsored by Mount Tabor Church of God. Jennifer was there and has more. There was singing, speaking, laughing and crying, praising and praying, forgiving and freedom. The 2015 Get Real Women's Retreat at Mount Tabor Church of God brought together nearly 100 women, fellowshipping together to hear messages of strength and encouragement. Now, I don't know, Mr. Forever is a, a hunter, and so we watch a lot of stupid videos about how to kill And this is what I know about hunting videos is that when a lion goes after an antelope, it does not go after the fat, sleek, well-fed, popular antelope in the middle of the pack. The lion never goes after that one. Which one does he go after? He goes after the real, frail one on the fringe, the one who's trying to do life all by itself. And it's the same with us. If we don't live in community, if we don't, if we don't believe that we are valuable, and we don't believe that we are worthy of friendship, and that we have something to contribute, then we will be that frail, easy target antelope on the fringe, and an easy target for an enemy attack. Encouragement to stay in fellowship with others, to focus on our God-given purposes, and tell the enemy to stay out of our lives. I 
author Robin Dykstra and singer-songwriter Hannah Beck. Plus, more than a dozen breakout sessions proved to be a two-day recipe for strength in numbers. The first women's retreat at Mount Tabor Church of God in Salina. Organizers say, yes, it's already time to think about plans for next year. Really a, a, a really a great conference. Um, mm -hmm. Zach, you were there I since was. your wife was leading worship and speaking, and I, I thought it was an excellent weekend. It was, just uh, nearly 100 women and um, just an excellent three opportunity. Guys. And three oh, guys. Maybe three four. Guys. Did you have your own there. small group? No, we didn't do a breakout <laughs> session. But we should have. But it was a great opportunity for them to come together and really just relate on a certain certain number of issues and to grow deeper in their faith. And it's just it's, it's exciting to see. Yes, my wife, wife was leading worship, but I was privileged to be there as well and to observe all that was going on. Awesome. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> like a women's conference when you need to be picked up. That's right. <laughs> Well, let's move on to our food segment for today. And today's Lost Creek Care Center food and health segment. We're going to play a little guessing game. Six. These guys know that I like to uh, Twelve. try to see if I can get them to do things they don't expect. Earlier in the show, I told you all about some of the fun October holidays. Now we're going to talk about some of the food holidays for this month. Mm. And I have brought along a bag it's of National Chicken items Wing month. Did you know that? That, yeah, I just made that, up. that we are going to pull from. We've got some clues. All of you at home can play along and we'll see which of these three guys can answer correctly. We have you, to eat are it you guys if we ready? Win. The deal is you do have to eat something from each of the items. Even oh. if you don't win, you have to eat something. Oh, uh, okay. So there's no motivation to lose. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're eating. You're eating, but uh, <laughs> yes. All right, let's just get started. All right. The first item. The first item. Okay, all four Crunchy. of you guys can Brownies. see this is... Look. Look, look. I'm not sure what we're guessing. I know. Cocoa powder? Did you just tell us? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Here's the deal. <laughs> This item is used for the National Food Holiday on October 18th. It's made in individual sized servings. Cocoa. The color is normally brown. Powder. Maybe you'd like semi-sweet versions or others would choose a milk version. I promise you, you're going to really like eating this. Chocolate bars. You can, you can actually make this in a large pan, but for this brownies? food holiday, I no. Said brownies a long time yeah, ago. Zach already won. But it's not brownies. Oh. Bark. Cake. It's not brownies. Almond bark. It Cupcake. is. October Cupcake, 18th man. is National Chocolate Cupcake Day. Chocolate. Wait, I don't understand the semi sweet and the milk version. Well, you can use semi sweet chocolate or milk chocolate in your chocolate cupcakes. Huh. You, okay. <laughs> <laughs> non dispute. <laughs> so, there you go. You have to eat a cupcake now. You don't really have cupcake. to eat a cupcake. <laughs> and I, like I want two. you to know that my daughter Abby picked these out specially because she said you guys needed to have the smiley ring pops at the top of them. I mean, they're not it's ring pops, but I think Abby no, just wants pops. to wear all the rings. Abby also <laughs> informed me that since there's only three of you guys, that means there's three left for Good her sisters her. and herself. <laughs> yeah, sounds like something. Where, where are the napkins? I only provide the food <laughs> ideas. Beyond that. Is that our only guess? Have no, that's number one. Oh. Okay. You don't really have to eat it if you don't want to. I win. Number two. <laughs> number two. Our next food, food holiday will straighten out this sweet tooth because mm. this is a very important component. Vinegar. Vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. You can also. Salad. So <laughs> vinegar is a very important ingredient and so are peppers. Peppers of all kinds, all sizes. They're in many recipes. Sometimes there is a heated recipe that's needed for this. Sometimes it's a refrigerated recipe. What holiday involves, well, what food involves peppers, vinegar, a little bit of thyme. Hot sauce. And possibly some My thyme. Or other T -I -M -E or thyme, T-I-M-E, or thyme, T-H-Y-M-E. T-I-M-E. So you can't put any herbs or spices on it? Well, you can. So it could you have can. thyme, T-H-Y-M-E. It could. I did not see My it in the recipe. My wife is going to be incredibly disappointed forward. in me. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I don't know, but she probably would. Something with peppers. October. October. Roasted actually, peppers. this week Are we still is guessing? I, I zoned out about 10 minutes ago. The third, You're in chocolate cupcake. The third week there. of October is pickled peppers week. Ew. How many pickles pickled. could Peter pick if Peter Piper Picker picked, picked a pack pipe. of pepper? Pe pepper pe pick. Well, guess what, guys? You get to pick from a great variety of peppers. Thanks to Burgess Farms, we have this nice 
purple variety. How many Look purple peppers could this Peter one is Piper green. pick? green. Can you imagine how pretty this would be in your pickled. pickled peppers? Well, they're, they become That's pickled. That's why you need the vinegar and the we thyme. We have these small mm. ones. Okay, so here's the deal, because the promise, the, the, the rule was you have to try everything that we work with. I don't think anyone promised that. <laughs> you, but but right, you, the, pepper it's here. pickled so, peppers, and none of those peppers are pickled, so we don't so have to try them. Let's pick a pepper and try it. Pick a pepper. <laughs> I don't really know how to select a good pepper. Let me just warn you, if you go small, Can it's going to be pretty hot. Oh, small is hot, huh? They now, smell a little different. For people who know me quite well, know that I actually eat peppers like apples. So if these guys waste these peppers, I'm going to be really sad. I don't want to make you sad, so I will not waste a pepper. <laughs> Look at it. Isn't that beautiful? I'm eating the pepper, Look and I'm not that. on TV. <laughs> oh, you are now. See it? <laughs> I've got a piece of a pepper. How many pieces of purple peppers did Piper like pick? Like my ring. Nice. All right, moving on now. Pickled pepper week is this week. Hope Maybe you if are I dip enjoying it. In frosting, it. It's better. Okay, we could go on and on. As <laughs> October is National Apple Month, it's National Caramel Month, it's National what? Pizza Month. What? Why did we not do pizza? It's also Vegetarian <laughs> Awareness favorite food. Month. It's National. Wait, pizza. wait, wait. Vegetarian Awareness, so we it know is. that there are vegetarians well, in the world. Yeah, I just want the pizza. You can continue, Jennifer. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, but for this final one, I'm rejecting my healthy standards to focus on one more October Because cupcakes are clearly <laughs> very healthy, and once you dip the pepper in the cupcake frosting, you're, you don't have to see a doctor for 10 years. <laughs> okay, this final food holiday, here is your clue. Vanilla pudding. Boston this one cream falls donuts. on October 23rd, and here are your hints. You, did I get it? You're close. You, did you call cream them Boston pie. cream donuts? You did. There's a major That's national city in this name. <laughs> it is a is it a pie or is it a cake? And one thing we know, it does need pudding. Boston cream pie. Boston cream pie. October twenty third is Boston so cream pie so day. So do we have that? And I want you to know that we do. I intended to make you Boston cream pie, but oh, uh, well, those are good. I couldn't, so I bought you Boston cream thanks, rolls. I'll eat a couple of these to make up for what I didn't eat uh, the peppers. In the peppers. I'm a pepper. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> I've got a stash over here now, a little candy stash. I've got Once again, though, these Abby was shocked that I was even buying these. These things are the greatest. Oh, my goodness. All right. So that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat. Why don't you read? Okay. Well, <laughs> you eat that and enjoy it for a Thanks. moment. But first, we do want to shift topic to a more serious topic. And, of course, no parent wants to bury a child. And it did happen to Dar and Deb Nevergall, and so many others who have suffered through the same difficult situation know what that's like. Jennifer recently sat down with the Nevergalls to talk about the grieving process and to learn more about Deb's new book, A Heart Never Forgets. Deb and Dar Nevergall are here with us today, and we're going to talk about um, how God is using a very, very difficult situation and probably helping others now because of that. Deb Williams Nevergall is the author of A Heart Never Forgets. Very touching book. Let's go ahead and get started. Tell me about this book and why you wrote it. I wrote A Heart Never Forgets to, first of all, help people, obviously. Um, I was inspired by an Inspiring Voices contest through Guideposts, and um, I wanted to write it. I wanted to write my story, but to write it in a more creative form. So, um, well, let's talk a little came bit from there. Let's talk a little bit about your story. Your daughter, Alyssa, uh, 19 mm -hmm. years old, back right. in 1998, passed away in a car accident. Correct. Um, what from that would you like to share with us? Well, I just think, you know, it's one of those situations, and, and it, like we said, it's the worst nightmare a parent can go through. And, at the night, actually, we were at a birthday party that night uh, for one of our cousins, one of Alyssa's cousins, and niece. Then, when the police officers show up at your door early in the morning, and they were carrying her purse, that was, you know, at that point, nothing needed to be said. We we knew right then, you know. No what words it, were necessary. And, yeah. So yeah, it's it's just you know, from there you just you know. One day at a time. One breath at a time. So here, that's 1998. You know, for the person who is just sitting watching this, thinks, "Oh, that's that's a decade ago. That's a couple decades Correct. ago, almost." But to you and to the people who loved Alyssa, it probably right. feels just like yesterday. Right. Yesterday and a lifetime ago. You know, you never get over the loss of a child, 
and somebody who's never gone through that most likely won't understand. Um, and people in our shoes obviously do. Um, and that's why I'm trying to encourage um, people reading this that what they're feeling is normal um, and also people who have never gone through it that you know to un try to understand give them understanding of how it really is for us you know to be more empathetic to people in their own lives who have lost loved ones and to be um, compassionate you know so many people expect you to get over it and they mm -hmm. give you a time frame and I talk mm -hmm. about that you know where um, you know it's there's no time frame for for grief, you know, yeah. you, you, it's just always there. So the book, when I started reading the book, I was surprised at the beginning because mm -hmm. um, it wasn't what I expected. It starts with a story, yeah. a really wonderful, heartwarming story about elephants. Right. Why did you pick elephants? Um, elephants never forget, first of all. Um, and I, when, when I started writing this, I thought, I would write a short story like they have in guideposts. And then when I read the guidelines and realized you had to have 10,000 words, I thought, where am I gonna find 10,000 words? I ended up coming up with 14,000, <laughs> which was miraculous. Um, but in there, were, there were things I could have put in and didn't. I wanted it, it to be not so much detail about Alyssa, but how to overcome from a perspective of overcomer rather than someone who is overcome. And um, the elephants just kind of morphed. Um, I started out with the kitty um, story. It actually happened. Um, our daughter uh, lost a kitty, Jessica, and we buried it under the apple tree. And I wrote a poem. I, I wrote a lot of song lyrics back then and poetry. And um, so I, for whatever reason, just kind of started out that way. And it merged into the elephant story. I was. Um, Sometime before that, I came up with a song out of nowhere, uh, The Road is a Weary Traveler, and I include that in here. And I told him, I said, I hear some like horses clip clop, clip clop. <laughs> and I said, maybe I'm going to write this for a spaghetti western. I, did, I had no idea, <laughs> but it was perfect for this story, and it, you know, kind of just worked out from there. A couple of the things I really like about this book first of all, it's not super long, right. no. so I don't think anybody would sit down and go, I can't read this. So it's something that could really reach people because it's right. readable. It's, it's, it's By design, it um, you know, caters to those who can't digest a large volume of words. A person who newly bereaved, you know, they're not going to take sit down and read a large novel. And they're short chapters for the same reason. They can pick it up and put it down and pick it up later and resume. The other thing I like about this, um, I love the fact that you do start in a story form. So I think it's very inviting. It brings anybody in who wants to read it, but then you move into not just talking about what you've gone through, but I think you've written it in a way that can impact anybody who's also gone through loss or difficulty. Correct. I mean, I think that this this definitely is a book that could definitely help all kinds of situations, all kinds of people. I pets, imagine that was your hope parents, as well. Parents, correct. Yeah. You know, the loss of you know we love our pets, and and I address that and. Um, like I said, I didn't really plan to write it that way, but I wanted to kind of ease in. Like he said, it, it's a it's a deep story, losing a child. I didn't want to just go right into that. So, um, In the book, just, you talk about how you started writing after Alyssa passed away. Right. And it was, was it a form of release? Yes. What, what have been some of the things that God has used to help you through this time? Um, I started writing in 94 um, to, to get through a bout you know, of depression, um, some frustrations in my life, trying to work that through. And I did it in um, word form. I'm a word person. Mm -hmm. And um, it's therapeutic. You know, paper is cheap and a good listener. I quote that here in my book. Um, it's just, it's, it works for me. I want to just read a couple things that you have written. This was from an email that actually they shared with us before this. But Deb, you say, God will sustain us when we cling to him. Losing a child is a parent's worst nightmare and the most devastating and life-altering circumstance will ever endure. But again, we want to stress how God will sustain us when we cling to him. What are some scripture verses that God has brought you? I wrote you? them down. Um, the, the two scriptures that really minister to me in my grief um, would be uh, Psalm 34:18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and save the crush, saves the crushed in spirit. 
Um, and Psalms 56, 8, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. And that one's big to me, just knowing that he cares about my tears and that he actually, you know, records them. Like he knows the number of my tears, like he knows the number of the hairs on my head. It's just a big comfort to me. So on that day when you had yes. the officers show up at that moment, mm -hmm. yet you still had God wrapping his arms exactly. around you. Right. And has been there ever since exactly. then. Exactly, he very near. What, what strong words those are for so many situations. I mean, that could be applied to so many situations in life, and yet here, situation that you never dreamed of, no. you never right. wanted, still to right. this day you wish never happened, right. but yet we've got something like this that is not just a healing tool for you, but I believe this is gonna be a healing tool for other people as well. That's the hope. Yeah. Yeah. How can people get a hold of this book? How can they find it? They can. Um, email us or text or um, get us through our web page and it's on the back of the book. If and you, we've got, we'll, got it on the screen right there as well, debwilliamsnevergall.com. They can email us um, through forever19adw at gmail.com. All right, so we've got the email, got the website, and of course you can call us here at TV44 if you have any questions, want to know how you can get a copy of this book or want to know how you can get a hold of Deb Williams Nevergall, um, do you speak at events? Do you go around to other places? Small so far, but um, I'm scheduled to do a larger crowd. Um, it's a Relay for Life coming up um, with maybe 200 people, so I, um, I'm up for that. All right, mm -hmm. I know God will give you the strength yeah. to do it. If he gave you the strength to write this, right. he definitely has a purpose and a plan. Right. Right. Dar and Deb One Nevergall. One step at a time. We're so thankful for you sharing this journey, sharing this healing journey, and uh, allowing God to take the pain you've suffered, but use it to be a blessing to other right. people around you. And for his good, for his so, glory. All right, again, that website is debwilliamsnevergall.com, and you can call us here at TV44 if you have any questions. Don't forget, you can also always call our prayer line, 339-3000, or email us, prayer at wtlw.com. We're here to pray for you. We care about the situations in your life. Back to you. Well, all throughout the show today, we've been talking about the October national holidays. This week is actually National Teen Driving Safety Week. According to the Ohio State Highway Patrol, teen drivers continue to cause a disproportionate number of traffic crashes each year. For the years 2012-2014, 75 percent of the crashes involving teens resulted in the teen driver being at fault. Hmm. And the Highway Patrol encourages parents to discuss, discuss traffic dangers with their teen drivers and remind them of the importance of staying focused on the road. 20% of the crashes reported in the years 2012 to 2014 were brought about by failure to yield, running a red light, or running a stop sign. Of course, we also encourage you to be praying for your teen drivers for not just safety, but also wisdom. Well, wisdom is one component required to perform well on the Bible Bee Game Shows, one of the new shows for our October programming lineup. The National Bible Bee Game Show is now on the weekly TV 44 lineup. Participants in this show started in the summer with the Bible Bee, and these are the top scores from the competition. And play along with the Bible Bee Friday nights at 9.30. If you weren't busy on Friday nights, I'd say let's <laughs> play each other, Mark. There's also more programming news to share with you. Andy Griffith is back, and we are pleased to report that we were able to negotiate a new contract deal, allowing us to get one of your favorite shows back on the air. Andy is back on his well-loved slot here on TV44. That's Monday through Fridays at 8 p.m. in a special extra episode Thursday nights at 8.30. And Fridays at 9 p.m., you can travel the country with the Green family during Chasing American Legends. Each episode is a fun journey through America's most amazing moments, redefining the history genre of reality television. Take a look. There was so much as we went through this museum that wasn't just interesting. It, I mean, it pierced at, at the heart of what I thought about my nation and, and my people. It really made me realize what they planted, the seeds that were planted, with the Declaration of Independence. It took a long time before we finally made the dream of America apply. October 29th is a day we want you to write in pen on your <laughs> calendar, especially if you or your spouse are involved in ministry. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. We're not going to give you Swiss cake rolls. Well, if there's any left over, I mean, I'll are take those? them. No, those are Boston uh, cream rolls. Perhaps. I mean, yeah. that, that might be on the, the menu. I've seen the menu. It's better. 
It's even better than that. <laughs> it includes Big B coffee. If you bring Little Debbie's to the breakfast, I guarantee you there'll be pastors that will snarf those up. I don't think we should talk about this anymore. <laughs> I, like I have word, belief snarf. <laughs> in, <laughs> I have belief in a desire for good health as I'm eating pepper. <laughs> that has, that she just washed. doesn't have a desire for our good health because she <laughs> finished Boston cream rolls and, and cupcakes. So. TV44 is again joining with WTGN Radio and Gifts of Joy, and there will be a few not so healthy donuts included in our great breakfast that's taking place October 29th. Here at TV44, it's the Pastor's Appreciation Breakfast. Again, that date, October 29th, it's 8.30 a.m. right here at TV44. Catered complete breakfast, coffee from Bigby. This year's speaker is Vince. Help me out, Jennifer. Mm, Antonucci? I was hoping you I was hoping you've already read the book and you knew. He's not from the area, so we can get away with that. He's the pastor of the Verve or Verve Church. Well, Verve. it's located in the Las Vegas Strip. So it could be Verve. We know that much. Yeah. His newest book is called God for the Rest of Us. As in the past, the morning will be filled with worship music, free books, great fellowship, donuts, and much more. <laughs> no peppers, involved though. involved in That's ministry. Not on the menu. We I'll bring encourage you to attend. This also makes a great gift. Tickets are only $10. You can purchase them over the phone or in person at any of the three sponsoring organizations. And stay tuned to TV44 as we will be giving away a pair of tickets as well. It's coming up quickly, October 29th, 8.30 a.m., right here at TV44, the annual Pastors Appreciation Breakfast, sponsored by WTGN, Gifts of Joy, and TV44. That's right. But speaking of tickets, we are giving away two tickets to the Pastors Breakfast. So you should enter today. All you have to do is go to WTLW.com and you click on the Faith and Friends right there and then click on Contest on the menu. Or you can mail in your entry to 1844 Beatty Road, that's in Lima, 45807. And we do have another ticket giveaway to announce, and so this one's kind of a big deal if you're a fan of Christian music, Andy. Ron Burgundy? <laughs> No, kind of a big it's deal. two tickets to see Chris Tomlin. Wow. Love Ran Red Tour. It's November 5th in Fort Wayne. Again, all you have to do is go to WTLW.com, click on Faith and Friends, and click on Contest. Notate Chris Tomlin in the notes of your entry so we know that that's what you're entering for. You can also mail your entry to 1844 Beatty Road. Again, that's 45807. Well, before we go today, we have something we'd like you to add to your prayer list. If you have a church prayer list or a small group prayer list, maybe you'd like to add it there as well. In just a few days, our fall fundraising campaign will begin. It's called Carrying Christ's Mission. And we're desiring to partner with you as together we carry Christ's mission to the region in 2016. In the coming weeks, you'll hear more from us on how together we are reaching the region for Christ. You are included in that together because everyone who partners with us is part of that mission. That's right. There are several different ways you can partner with TV44. First of all, you can just be praying for us, as Jennifer just requested. You can also volunteer with the TV station or can also donate financially. As a viewer-supported TV station, God uses the financial donations to keep our ministry going. So as you prepare your hearts and minds for these coming weeks, we ask again that you keep our fall campaign in your prayers. And if God is calling you to partner with us financially, we say thank you in advance. What an awesome privilege it is to be able to share the love of Jesus through the television airwaves. And on that note, we'll take one final look at our scripture for the day. Jennifer. Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Though you wage war, those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. What wonderful promises we have from our Heavenly Father. And regardless of what situations we are going through in our lives, God is there to lead us through them. Well, for all of us here at TV44, thanks so much for joining us this week on Faith and Friends. Remember, you can watch this and other segments again at WTLW.com on Faith and Friends. Until next week, have a great week, everyone.